Okay, I should be live. I see the green box. That means I'm here and ready to go. Well, let me put my message in. Welcome to this live English lesson. Today we're going to do cartoon analysis. Right. And it's the first one, so I'm experimenting again. We'll see how it goes. Whoop. My phone is doing funky things. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Whoop. I see people in the comments. I see Maria Antonetta Pellegrini. Hello, everyone from Italy. Hello. Mahmoud Shabanifard says, hi, everyone. Hello, hello. Okay, so today we're doing cartoon analysis. And what this means, well, first it's a live English lesson. Great. And we are going to analyze comics, explore vocabulary, and, you know, we try to have some fun. <laughs> and as necessary, we can uh, use Google image search and we can also, where is it? There it is. We'll also use a dictionary if we need to, to exp uh, explore the meaning of some words. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at our first comic for today. And here it is. I'll be typing as we go and whoop, there it is. Here's our first comic for today, and I'll be typing. And I would love it if you guys help me out. Help me to describe what we see, okay? So, what I see right now, I'm looking at this picture right here. It's a pretty simple one, right? There's not a lot of super, not an, a huge amount of details. And feel free to help me out. So, we can see a man and a cat. <laughs> they are having a conversation. Right, uh, they are standing, I'll we'll probably say there, it's more common to use the contraction, standing in front of a, hmm, what do you think? I'm going to leave some blanks and let you guys help me out. Uh, the cat and the man are standing in front of what? What would we say? Hmm, uh, the man says, I'm going out behave <laughs> and the cat says aha Mahmoud Shabani Fard says aquarium yes I would think aquarium all right so they're standing in front of aquarium of uh, of an aquarium right we have to put an because we can't have two vowels for back to back and we could say full of fish and maybe it's not full but there are fish right there are fish inside. We can see them swimming around. So the man says, I'm going out. Behave. First, if he's going out, you know, he's going to be leaving the home, leaving the house. Maybe he's going out to a movie. Maybe he's going to see friends. The possibilities are endless. All right. So somehow, maybe I should add, it, add in here. They're having a conversation. Somehow, the cat is able to speak. <laughs> uh, that's the beauty of uh, cartoons, right? All right, so the man says, I'm going out, behave. Hmm, can someone tell me what does the word behave mean? Here it's a command. So the, the, man, the man is telling the cat. He's not asking. He's saying, behave. So what does the word behave mean? Hmm, can someone tell me in the comments? Because we're also going to take a look at the dictionary. Ah, Leila Almeida says, good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. Good evening for me, or a good night for me, but isn't it cool that we can all connect from different parts of the world? All right, so let's see. Who can tell me what the word behave means? Because I think we're going to go look in the dictionary. Here we go. Ooh, dictionary. Ah, Mahmoud says, treat, conduct. Well, let's see. And that would be behavior, your conduct. Let's see here, behave. Let's take a look. All right, let me move it over so you can see. All right. So here it's a verb, right? So it's an action. It's an action, right? It's not a thing. Because the man said to the cat, behave. All right, so here we go. Act or conduct oneself in a specified way, especially towards others. Mm-hmm. So the example here is he always behaved like a gentleman. Ah, oh, how nice. 
All right, synonyms, conduct oneself, act, acquit oneself, bear oneself, carry oneself, and so forth. Okay, so let's go back to the, where is it? Here it is. All right, so the man says, I'm going out, behave. In other words, don't make problems. <laughs> I want to come back and have my house be wonderful. And the cat replies, sure. <laughs> so here sure is the an affirmative, right? So it's an affirmative meaning like yes. So the man says, I'm going out. I'll be hanging out with my friends. Behave yourself. Don't make problems, right? And the cat replies, sure, of course. However, <laughs> the cat is wearing, hmm, can you guys help me describe what is the cat wearing? Let's see, we have a question. Mahmoud Shabani Fard says, for sure can be used. All right, so here all by itself, sure, is just an affirmative response. He could say, he could say, okay, he could say, sure. Yes, uh, that sounds good. You bet, of course. Here, all it is right now is it's an affirmative response. Mm -hmm. And it, another meaning for sure is like you're sure of something. And let's see, let's go look in the dictionary because the dictionary is wonderful. Let's look up sure. All right, okay. So let's see if we can find it. See, there's a lot of different ones here. All right. Okay, so in the, in the comic, it's functioning here as an adverb, meaning certainly. And it's used to show assent, that you agree. Are you serious? Sure. Right? So yes. Here's synonyms. Yes, all right, of course, indeed, certainly. That's in the context we're using as an adverb. However, it can also be an adjective. It can mean that you're confident, you're certain, you're positive. However, in this context, it means certainly. It's an affirmative response. Okay, let's see. So however the cat is wearing, ooh, I had, <laughs> let's see. Maria Antonita says sub, sub aqueous, sub aqueous. Ooh, like, let's see, the cat is wearing, we could say diving gear. Um, we could also say maybe uh, the cat is wearing a uh, snorkeling mask and uh, dive fins. All right. <laughs> snorkel, yes. Snorkel is the tube that goes up, right? Let's look up dive fins. All right, let's see where we are. Let's look at some pictures of dive fins. So we can see them a little bit better and they're bigger. Okay, so they're dive fins and they just help you swim through the water like a fish. Much better than without, right? Okay, and let's see, let's look up snorkeling gear. All right, because snorkel snorkeling is... Uh, not exactly the same as like scuba diving, right? That's, so snorkeling is, uh, da -da -da, you put on the mask and you can go underwater and you can breathe through the little tube, right? So if you go down too deep <laughs> and you still try to breathe, you're gonna suck in a big mouthful of water and then you'll be choking. But if you've had practice, um, you can hold your breath, you dive down, then you come back up and you blow the water out. So it's not a big problem. So snorkeling is like that. If we're talking about scuba scuba diving, it's a bit different. You might still wear the snorkel and a mask, but uh, scuba diving is wearing a tank on your back, right? And you have air and you can swim around. All right, someone join. Leah Huda says hi. Hello, hello, welcome. So this is scuba diving and uh, and let's take a look at snorkeling. All right, so this is snorkeling. Snorkeling is much less 
dangerous, I guess we should say. <laughs> is if you're scuba diving, you can go quite deep, right? And if you have a problem down below, then uh, it can be dangerous. Uh, back in college, I took a, a scuba diving course to get certified. And they trained us, and there's a lot, to, a lot of stuff to learn. And Right. So it's a bit more serious than snorkeling, but snorkeling is, is very fun as well. Okay, let's go back. Yes, Mahmoud Shabani Far says oxygen tank on the back. Yes, that would be for diving. Okay, oop, here we go. And dive fins. Okay, so the cat is wearing a snorkeling mask and dive fins. <laughs> so we could probably say uh, the cat's intentions are to what? Hmm, you guys help me out. The cat's intentions are to what? And when the man returns, he will find, <laughs> or he will see what? What do you think? He will find, da -da. all right, let's see. Layla Almeida before had said the fish is glad because his intentions is to eat the fish. Mm hmm. All right, the cat's intentions are to take a little swim <laughs> swim in the fish tank and eat and have a snack have a snack right so in other words he is going to eat the fish all right <laughs> mahmoud shabani far says stay away from water mm, i don't think this cat is going to do that he's going to jump right in the moment the man leaves so what about this one? What would you guys put in the blank? When the man returns, when he comes back, he will f <laughs> he will find or he will see. What do you think? What do you guys think? Hmm. What are our possibilities? What do you think? Da -da -da. Don't see any responses yet. So when the man comes back, maybe a couple hours later, he will see that the fish have mysteriously <laughs> yes mahmoud says aquarium is empty of fish all right we could also say he will see that the fish have mysteriously disappeared mm -hmm. into <laughs> right into the into the cat's stomach right Layla almeida says no one fish in the aquarium no fish left in the aquarium right so if if we look at this guy, um, something tells me that this this man is not very clever. He's not very smart because he sees his cat standing right there with snorkeling gear, right next to the fish tank, and it's kind of obvious that the fish or the cat is going to be hunting and having a snack. Ah, Mahmoud says vanished, wiped out. Yes, the fish will be gone. Hmm. And I wonder what the man will do. Will he be upset with the cat or will he just buy some new fish? <laughs> Leila Almeida says it's better to investigate the cat. Yes. All right. So let's see. Maybe we'll, let's do some pronunciation, okay? So wherever you are in the world, repeat after me. I'm going to go sentence by sentence and I will pause so you can pronounce. All right. So listen to how I say it and pronounce it yourself. Here we go. We can see a man and a cat. They are having a conversation. Somehow the cat is able to speak. They're standing in front of an aquarium full of fish. The man says, I'm going out. Behave. The cat replies, sure. <laughs> okay. And let me guys know if you guys are doing pronunciation. Put some apples in the comments if you're doing pronunciation with me. It will let me know that you are participating and you're interested in doing pronunciation. Okay, here we go. Repeat after me. However, the cat is wearing diving gear.
The cat is wearing a snorkeling mask and dive fins. The cat's intentions are to take a little swim in the fish tank and have a snack. He's going to eat the fish. When the man returns, he will see that the fish have mysteriously disappeared. Okay, so once again, if you guys are doing pronunciation, put some apples in the comments. And <laughs> so Mambo says, so optimistic or stupid man he is. Yes. And uh, Mahmoud also says, I was wondering in what way the cat was able to convince the man. <laughs> Maybe the man is blind. There it is. That's the solution. Maybe the man is blind and he can't see the cat. And the cat knows this. So he's like, "Woo! time to go swimming. Okay. All right. Let's move to the next cartoon. All right. Here we go. All right. So this is... <laughs> Another simple cartoon. And there are four pictures, or we could say... Oh, Leila Almeida says, snorkeling pronunciation one more time. Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. The word is snorkeling, right? And the phrase is a snorkeling mask. And repeat after me the sentence... The cat is wearing a snorkeling mask and dive fins. Okay, all right. All right, so we're on to our next cartoon, or our next comic cartoon. So there are four different pictures. One, two, three, four, right? We can also call them frames, right? So in frame number one, or picture number one, uh-huh. So we'll here we go. Yes. Leah Huda says a snake with two heads. So let's go frame by frame and we'll describe it. You guys can help me. So here we go. In uh frame number one, we can see uh <laughs> what looks like two uh snakes talking to each other. <laughs> All right. In uh, frame number two, the two snakes are just looking at each other. And we can say one of them is wearing what? What do you think? I'm going to leave that one blank and you guys tell me what goes in the blank, okay? So in frame number two, two snakes are just looking at each other. One of them is wearing what? What do we call that? What is this snake wearing on his face? Mm -hmm. Aha. Okai Sato says glasses. Right, they're glasses. And Mahmood says sunglass. Right. So they're a specific kind of glasses. Sunglasses. Right. Okay. And let's just take a look at picture, some pictures to make sure that we know what we're talking about. Here we go. All right, so if we put in sunglasses, it's pretty obvious, right? If we just put in glasses, hmm, well, it's probably going to show us these kind of glasses that aren't sunglasses. If we keep going far enough, maybe they would show sunglasses. But if you just say regular glasses, this is what it is. And to complicate it even more, because many times the words depend on the context, right? If we say glasses for drinking, what do you think will show up? Aha! So these are also glasses, but you're not going to really use them to see anything, right? So it depends on the context. Very important to know, right? Leah Huda says glasses for sight, for seeing. Yes, that's correct. All right, let's go back. Whoop. So here we go. One of them is wearing sunglasses. Okay, so let's go to frame number three. Something happens. In frame number three, <laughs> we could say 
No one is talking, but what? How do we describe what happens to the sunglasses on this snake? Hmm, but let's see. I see Leila Almeida says glasses, okay. Well, in this context, we need to say sunglasses because they have the dark, dark covering. All right, so in frame number three, no one is talking, but what happens? We can say, Mahmoud says, Psst. is that the sound of a snake? Psst. <laughs> All right, in frame. Ah, yes, Leah Huda says the sunglasses are about to fall down. And we wouldn't say fall down since they're kind of on the face. No one is talking, but the sunglasses of the snake on the right are about to fall off, right? And if we wanted to describe how are they, you know, you could say they are hanging, uh, off the snake's face right so they're not in their proper position they're hanging to the side right right Leila Almeida says because the glasses are not in the correct place okay in frame number four <laughs> we can see that the sunglasses what fell what would you fill in there fell we also learn that there are not two snakes it is a <laughs> is one snake talking to itself hmm ah leila almeida says dropped <laughs> leila Lea huda says maybe because the male is very shy is possible all right so what can we put in this in frame number four we can see that the sunglasses fell there you go. Mahmoud says down onto ground. Okay. We can say fell uh, down to the ground. Or let's see. There's different ways. Let's see. We can see that the sunglasses, we could just say fell off and, and uh, landed on the ground. Right. Let me move this up. Okay. So we can say we can see that the sunglasses fell off and landed on the ground. And we also learned that there are not two snakes. It is one snake talking to itself. Mm -hmm. So, maybe the uh, snake is bored. <laughs> he's lonely. And he's like, hey, no, I can talk to myself. Mm -hmm. So, if we would only see these frames one by one, we wouldn't know that it's the same snake. But since we can see all four frames together, we can, you know, see it's just one snake. All right. <laughs> yes, Mahmoud says talking with its tail, right? It is one snake talking to itself, talking to its own tail. Which one is poisonous? Hmm, Mohamed Farak says which one is poisonous? Well, if a poisonous snake bites itself, does it get poisoned? I don't know. <laughs> Okai Sato says a snake is crying. Yes, it is. I hadn't noticed that. Yes, you're right. Uh-huh. Okay, so maybe we can add that in somehow. Let's see. I'll move this up. All right. Uh, it is one snake talking to itself. And he or it feels depressed and lonely. Hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. So let's take a look. Let's do a little bit of pronunciation. Repeat out loud after me. You can boost your uh, pronunciation. Here we go. In frame number one, we can see what looks like two snakes talking to each other. In frame number two, the two snakes are just looking at each other. One of them is wearing glasses. Okay, repeat after me out loud and improve your pronunciation. I will pause and wait for you to speak. Here we go. 
In frame number three, no one is talking, but the sunglasses of the snake on the right are about to fall off. They are hanging off the snake's face. In frame number four, we can see that the sunglasses fell off and landed on the ground. We also learn that there are not two snakes. We also learn that there are not two snakes. It is one snake talking to itself and it feels depressed and lonely. Okay. So let me know if you guys did pronunciation, if you were practicing your pronunciation, put some apples in the comments or just say, yes, I was doing pronunciation. <laughs> All right, let's see. Mahmoud says, I, I've never seen a snake that's able to show juggling for an audience. Me neither. That would be interesting. Okay. Ah, so Mohammed Farak says, so some apples, great. Thank you for letting me know. So I need to know if you guys are participating, right? Okay, so let's move to the next co cartoon or comic. Here we go. All right, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. All right, so let's do pronunciation of what they're saying in the picture, in the speech bubble. This is called a speech bubble, right? It's not a thought bubble because a thought bubble would have like, like a cloud. Let's see. Let's take a look at the difference between a speech bubble and a thought bubble. So there's a speech bubble, right? So we have like a little pointy thing that shows the words are coming out. We also have a thought bubble. Aha, so it's like a cloud because it's, you know, the, the voices are in your head, hopefully, or the information is in your head. Where did my thing go? There it is. Okay. All right. So repeat after me. I get amazing tips once I explain that I'm only there to, to deliver their pizza. All right. So the title of this cartoon is Death Takes a Side Gig. Hmm. So it's very common for cartoons and movies and stuff to represent death as a skeleton wearing a long black hooded hooded robe and carrying a scythe. Hmm. So let's take a look. Uh, death. Let's see. Scythe is the word for the tool that he's carrying, right? And it's scythe is just a. a a farmer's tool that's used to let's see right it's just used to cut grass so now that they have uh, motorized and more advanced tools you know not all the farmers use them but it's just for cutting grass or hay or long grass so that's the scythe and you can see he has a black hooded uh, long long black hooded robe okay so Ah, oh, Mamu says to trim lawns. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of old technology, right? Okay, so we can call death the Grim Reaper. That's another word for it. Uh, death, another word for it is the Grim Reaper. So let's just make sure that I'm not lying to you. <laughs> and let's go look at some pictures and see if it's the same. All right. Grim Reaper. All right, there we go. So the Grim Reaper is still the person with the scythe in a black uh, robe with a hood, right? So this is the Grim Reaper, okay? And sometimes we just call him Death. And I assume it's a him. Actually, I don't know if it's a he or a she. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look. Uh, in this cartoon, we can see 
two grim reapers having a conversation, right? One grim reaper, or how about this, we'll be more specific. The one on the left is wearing the normal outfit <laughs> for death, right? However, the, gr the one on the right is <laughs> wearing a helmet and carrying a delivery box. Okay, and it looks like it's a box for delivering pizza, right? Okay, and they're having a conversation. And let's see, we'll try to change the words or give another way to explain what he's saying. Uh, the Grim Reaper, the Grim Reaper on the right is explaining <laughs> that he can make or he can earn a lot of money in tips um, when he tells people that uh, they're not going to die. <laughs> he is just there to uh, deliver their pizza or to bring them their pizza. Okay, so let's see. There are some words in here that we should probably check out. And if you guys have questions, please let me know down below. So we already looked up the Grim Reaper, but let's talk about tips. What is a tip? What is the purpose of a tip? We'll look at uh, how about tips at a restaurant. Yes, Leila Almeida says tips. Okay, so after you pay for your meal, you have the bill, and maybe you want to give extra money, right? So this, in this context, in with the Grim Reaper in this cartoon, it's extra money. So let's see. Uh, we'll do pizza tips. Uh, let's see, that's not quite right. Tips for ordering pizza. Okay, so this guy will come to your house, and if he's nice and respectful and stuff like that, then you can give him extra money, right? So you pay the bill, but you give him extra money to say thank you. So let's see, giving a tip to the pizza guy. Okay, woo! Now this is probably a dream come true. <laughs> Tipping pizza delivery guys ten thousand dollars. Holy cow! All right, so maybe I don't know, or even a hundred bucks. That's nuts. Sure. So Leah Huda says a small amount of money, right? At least in the U.S., um, fifteen to twenty percent is considered a good tip, or a respectable tip at a restaurant, but sometimes people go crazy. Uh, Leila Almeida says tips equals profit. No, tips are not profit. Profit, you know, is dealing with money and tips dealing with money. But in here, tip is just the extra amount of money that you give someone to say thank you for their service, for helping out. So in this case, the guy is bringing pizza and someone gives him $10,000 as a tip. Now, this would not be common, but it would make this guy's day. He would be like, wow, incredible. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at, in the dictionary, a tip, because there are different meanings for a tip. I think someone before had said, like, it's advice. And yes, depending on the context. Context. Okay, so a tip. All right, so if it's a noun, it can be, the, it can be uh, like the tip of a pencil. The tip of a spear, or maybe, let's see, where's my pen? Okay, so here's my pen. I don't know if you can see it. So the tip is right there, right? So that's a thing. It's the pointy part part of something. You can also say your fingertip, right? The tip of your finger. All right, let's take a look. All right. All right, they have mountains tipped with snow. So if you think of a mountain on top, there might be uh, snow. So let's see. Mountain peaks. Okay, so way up on top they have uh, snow on them. All right, let's see. On here, ah, 
Okay, second definition, overbalance or cause to overbalance as to fall or turn over. As in the boat or the car tipped over. Let's see. The car tipped over. Okay, so here, tip, we're not talking about money. <laughs> we're talking about tipping over, right? The car tipped over, so it went over onto its sides. So maybe it had an accident or something, right? Let's see. Oh, it just keeps going. There's so much. <laughs> All right, the third definition. This is what we are talking about in this cartoon. A sum of money given to someone as a reward for their services. Hmm, a gratuity, bonus, a little bit extra. You're giving them a little bit more money to say thank you, right? It's a kind thing to do. So the one over here, let's see if I'll find it. Aha. Uh -huh. So this guy's getting a tip, a really big tip, because the guy wants to say thank you. Okay. All right, so let's go back. Money, a lot of money. Okay, so he's telling the guy, I get amazing tips. <laughs> Once I explain that I'm only there to deliver their pizza. So if death, death comes to your door, or the Grim Reaper comes to your door, you're probably thinking that your time is, you're going to die. But this Grim Reaper is just like, no, I'm just here to deliver your pizza, man. And the people are like, great, here's a tip. <laughs> because they're so happy to be alive. Mm-hmm. All right, so it's just a conversation. Ah, here's important. Death takes a side gig. All right, let's take a look. What is a side gig? Well, a side gig is, put it down here, an extra job. Right? So if you have a side gig, you're doing something extra. So <laughs> death or the Grim Reaper's main job is to, you know, kill people or when they die, you know, they do what death does. But he also has a side gig, which is an extra job. <gasps> okay, let's see. So we have in the comments, Leah Huda says, like when we place a tip in restaurants for waiters. Yes. Right in restaurants, maybe in a taxi, maybe if uh, uh, you're at a hotel and someone helps you to bring your suitcases upstairs, maybe you'll give a tip. But I'm, I've learned very quickly that it depends on the country. Right? I'm here in Indonesia, and it doesn't seem that hardly anyone tips. Sometimes I tip, and I think people appreciate it. But in general, people don't seem to tip that much. It's different culture. In the U.S. If you go to a restaurant and you don't tip, then you end up getting a bad reputation. People think, why didn't they tip? <laughs> so it depends on the culture and it depends on the country. All right. All right. So a side gig is an extra job. A side gig, extra job. All right. Layla Almeida, extra money. People stay afraid of death. P yes, when people see Grim Reaper, they're very afraid, and so they're they're very willing to give a huge tip. Ah, Maria Antonetta says in the USA, twenty percent. That's right, right. And uh, twenty percent is considered a respectable tip. If you go below that, then you know. You know, it's not the end of the world, but the waiter, waiter or the waitress would be like, they kind of tipped low. If you go to 30% or 40%, the waiter or the waitress would be like, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's do some pronunciation. So repeat after me. I will, um, let's see. Angel says, can you give us tips to better teach vocabulary, games, and so on? Well, I have a lesson prepared today, and we're talking about cartoons or comics, and we're doing lots of vocabulary there. I do uh, different live lessons depending. I've done online exercises and quizzes and stuff like that. But today we're doing cartoon analysis. So we're talking about different cartoons. All right, here we go. So repeat after me. Um, I will pause after I read the sentence so you can repeat out loud wherever you are. Here we go. In this cartoon, we can see two Grim Reapers having a conversation.
The one on the left is wearing the normal outfit for death. However, the one on the right is wearing a helmet and carrying a delivery box. The Grim Reaper on the right is explaining that he can earn a lot of money in tips when he tells people that they're not going to die. He's just there to bring them their pizza. Okay, so if you're doing pronunciation, show me some apples in the comments. It lets me know that you're participating and that you're interested in doing pronunciation. Okay, all right, so let's move forward to another cartoon. Da -da -da. <laughs> let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Here we go. Okay, interesting, interesting. First, let's just do... Oh, okay, Sato says how to put apples. Um, well, for me, if I right click on the part where I want to put in a comment, it gives me a menu to put in apples, right? Um, I don't know, maybe different computers or different browsers might have different options. So if you, if you uh, are unable to put apples, you could just say apples. <laughs> Or, I'm doing pronunciation, something like that. Okay, so here in the cartoon, repeat after me. We're going to say what's in the speech bubble, right? Here is the speech bubble. Here we go. Repeat after me. I see you eyeballing that French girl. All right, one more time. Repeat after me. I see you eyeballing that French girl. Okay, here we go. First, uh, we have a comment. Mahmoud uh, Shabani Far says, I'm definitely sure Michael's slogan is an apple a day keeps the doctor away. I do like apples. I do like apples. Perhaps the next time you're in the market or you're, you're, uh, you're shopping for fruit and you're in the grocery store, you'll be like, ah! Makes me think of Able Lingo. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go back. Here we are. All right, so let's describe this, what's happening in this picture, and then we'll take a look at some of the vocabulary, okay? So here we go. There are two potatoes. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's start again. Uh, there are a total of three potatoes in this picture. Let's see a quick question. Leah Huda says, I have a question. Why do we pronounce T in pizza although it's not written? Hmm. I don't. Pr so the word pizza, I, I don't make a T sound in the word pizza. Hmm. I'm not sure about that. I just say pizza. Pizza. The pizza was delicious. I don't think I make a T sound in the word pizza. Hmm. Okay. So there are a total of three potatoes in this picture. We could say two of the potatoes are a, we'll say, a married couple. We don't know for sure if they're married, but they're together, right? Ah, Sky Blue says finger potato. <laughs> we could say the other potato is a French fry, right? So let's take a look. What are French fries? I'm sure you guys know what French fries are. You've probably eaten them. French fries. There you go. French fries. So they're just potatoes that are sliced up and then dipped. And maybe they add salt and stuff, but they put them in the fryer. And uh, let's see. Frying French fries. We'll put that. Let's see. Da -da -da -da. There you go. So they put them in the French the frying in the oil and then they fry and then they probably add some salt maybe some seasoning and they taste delicious 
And of course, they're not healthy at all. <laughs> oh, but they taste nice. Okay. All right. So the other potato is a French fry. Ah, Mahmoud Shabanifar says crisps or chips. Now that is a British thing. In the U.S., we say French fries. And I'm from the U.S., so I'll explain it <laughs> as an American but crisps or chips that's going to be a British thing or a UK thing but seems to have pretty much uh, the same meaning okay all right so the other potato is a French fry the female potato <laughs> is saying to her husband uh, I see you eyeballing that French girl eyeballing that French girl. Okay, so there's some good vocabulary here. First, that French girl is just the French fry, right? So that's the type of potato. Uh, these potatoes, maybe they are raw potatoes or maybe boiled potatoes, but they're definitely not in the shape of a French fry. Okay, so the female potato is saying to her husband, I see you eyeballing. Hmm, what does the word eyeballing mean? And I think that is a great question for our dictionary. Let's see what we have. Goodbye, French fries. Hello, eyeballing. So here it's a verb. Let's see. Ah, Okai Sato says, what does this mean, eyeballing? We're about to find out. Let's see, here we go. Anna Gel says, can fry be used as a noun? Hmm. I have, well, we'll take a look at that in a moment. I think we'll take a look at that moment. Here we go. So eyeballing, to eyeball. Let's see if we can hear it. Eyeball. Hopefully you can hear that. Eyeball. Eyeball. Okay. It means to look or stare at closely. Here's the example. We eyeballed one another. All right. Here's a great opportunity for pronunciation. So repeat after me. We eyeballed one another. <laughs> so it makes me think of people, right? They're, they're looking at each other. It's like staring at someone. Okay. And it looks like it's a fairly new word since like 1950. And boom, it's in 2010, everybody's using it. Okay. So eyeball is to look at one another closely. Like staring. Yes. Leila Almeida says, see with intentions. <laughs> <laughs> probably it's more than just glancing right you're you're staring you're looking at all right uh let's see if i can answer the question angel said can fry be used as a noun well you can say french fry so french fry is a thing a fry would be a noun let's just put it in and see what happens well it's going to have the verb right away which is the action of you know preparing the french fries but here you go Fry, it can be a noun, a meal of meat, or other food cooked by frying. Hmm, there you go. You'll explore islands and stop for a fish fry. Okay, so the fry here is a noun. What kind of fry? It's a fish fry. There you go, another term for French fry. Okay, so fry can be a noun. If it's plural, fries. Okay, all right, let's get back to our cartoon. All right, so the female potato is saying to her husband, I see you eyeballing that French girl. As in, I see you staring at that French girl. <laughs> so we can say the wife is upset and what? Can you guys figure out a word that would go in there? And I think Layla had said it before. Ah, there it is. Muhammad Farak says the female is jealous. All right. I just scrolled down in the comments to see it. Sure, we could do a lot of She's upset, jealous, angry, pissed off, <laughs> envious, frustrated, uh, enraged, um, and uh, mad. <laughs> Furious, jealous, angry, right. Uh-huh. So let's see if you can finish this one. The wife thinks the man should not what? Can you guys fill in that sentence? 
The wife thinks the man, or maybe we'll be more specific, thinks the husband <laughs> should not what? Hmm. So before we had the wife is upset, jealous, angry, pissed off, envious, frustrated, enraged, and mad. All right, can you guys finish this sentence? The wife thinks the husband should not what? So we're probably looking for an action here, some type of verb, something that describes his behavior, what he should not be doing. Ah, Mahmoud says vulgar. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, Kai Sato says eyeballs. <laughs> uh huh. That was the verb, right? Eyeballing, to be staring. Ah, there we go. Muhammad Farak says the wife thinks the husband should not eyeball the French girl. Right. I need to make sure to make to capitalize the F on French. <laughs> Leah Huda said, okay, Leila Almeida says should not be eyeballing. Leah Huda says he has the right to eyeball her because she's more beautiful. <laughs> she's more beautiful and fitter. Mm -hmm. You could say she's more beautiful and in better shape. Uh huh. So maybe we could add that in there. So the wife thinks the husband should not eyeball the French girl. However, the husband <laughs> thinks the French girl is beautiful and in great and in great shape and when we're talking about shape we're probably talking about physical shape healthy with a nice body stuff like that aha uh -huh, like Mo Mo Muhammad Farak says slimmer fitter and in better shape right so these potatoes right here I should say they remind me of a toy called Mr. Potato Head. And I remember when I was a kid, I, I imagine they still sell this toy, but I'm going to show you a toy that I had when I was a kid. Let's see, here we are. It's called Mr. Potato Head. And it's just uh, literally what you can do. Let's see, I'll show you the pieces. It's, and it, it's for like little kids, right? So you can take the pieces off and you can put them in and you can change them around and, you know, have fun, I guess. <laughs> but it's in the shape of a potato and you can change the eyes, the ears, the different face pieces and stuff like that. So that's Mr. Potato Head. And this is the original one. So this is what they had when I was a kid. Right there. Ah, memories. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Let's see. Leah Huda says popular toy. All right. See, Mahmoud Shabanifar says when we choose someone, until the time we are in relationship with him or her, we should be responsible about our actions. Mm hmm. Right? And the reason would be is that if you want to have a decent relationship with good respect, you're probably going to respect the other person's uh, feelings and intentions. All right. Let's see, Leila Almeida says the husband forgot when he knew the first time she was beautiful. Okay, so maybe the husband forgot that his wife was beautiful. He forgot about her beauty, I guess. Uh-huh. Leila Almeida says the husband forgot. Okay. All right. So, the, the two potato heads are looking at the French girl. And the French girl hasn't done anything wrong. She just happened to be standing there. Okay? All right, so let's do some pronunciation. Repeat after me. I will pause so you can say it out loud. Here we go. There are a total of three potatoes in this picture. Two of the potatoes are a married couple. The other potato is a french fry. And maybe we'll add in there a female french fry, right? Okay. The female potato is saying to her husband, I see you eyeballing that french girl. All right. Let's make sure it's a big F. Okay, here we go with all of the adjectives. 
The wife is upset, jealous, angry, pissed off, envious, frustrated, enraged, and mad. Okay. The, whoop, the wife thinks the husband should not eyeball the French girl. However, the husband thinks the French girl is beautiful and in great shape. Okay, so if you did pronunciation, put some apples in the comments. I will put some apples. Because I did pronunciation. Here we go. Yay, delicious apples. Leah Huda says, this picture shows the reality we live in. I guess potato reality that would be strange <laughs> okay let's see sky blue says enraged um, perhaps that's a question enraged just means really angry I mean like really angry mm-hmm um, envious and jealous have pretty much the same meaning <laughs> okay Sato says apples yes <laughs> All right, so, all right. Oh, Leah Huda says, I mean the attitude. Yes, I understand. <laughs> I understand. I was just joking with you. <laughs> okay, all right. I have one more cartoon. It's the last one. Here we go. Let's take a look. Mm, no words on this one, just numbers. So what do you think? How can we explain this cartoon? Looks a little bit frustrating, huh? All right, so we have three. Ah, there we go. Mahmoud Shabanifar says chaos. That's right. Mama Mohammed says fighting. Uh-huh. Right. Great. <laughs> Maria Antonetta says Italy. <laughs> uh-huh. Interesting. Leila Almeida says game. All right, so let's take a look. This is kind of an interesting one because it's more of a concept, right? It's more of a way of thinking. Ah, Mahmoud says misconceptions. Leela Huda says two teams fighting each other. Wonderful. You guys are doing my work for me. Great. <laughs> Leila, made, uh, Leila says uh, everyone is angry. Mahmoud says misunderstanding. Okay. So let's see. Here's how I would describe it. It's one way to do it. Leila Almeida says, or enraged, right? They're probably enraged. Okay, so this is what I see. There are two different groups fighting with each other. One group is red and the other, well, let's see, one group is wearing red and the other group is wearing blue, right? They are arguing about a math <laughs> math problem or maybe a math equation right one team says uh, one plus one equals one the other group or team says uh, one plus one equals three they are pissed off are very how about incredibly pissed off all right and pissed off means angry upset urgh, enraged okay so however <laughs> they are wrong right the right answer to is standing below and watching watching the chaos um <laughs> someone from the red team and from the blue team are about to attack the right answer. All right. Right. So Muhammad says both are mistaken. Mahmoud says, but the referee has stand there like a potato. <laughs> it looks like the referee. I think it's the right answer. And I guess... There's probably a deeper meaning to this cartoon is that people sometimes are so passionate 
and stubborn that they are right. They're like, no matter what, I am right. And even if they're wrong, they're going to keep fighting for what they believe is right. So it ends up being kind of strange, right? Because they're obviously wrong, but they keep fighting no matter what. So let's see. Uh, sometimes people are so passionate about what they believe that they argue even if they are obviously <laughs> wrong, right? So here it is kind of like an attitude. It's an ego issue. It's uh, uh, I need to show you I'm right, even though it's impossible. Because maybe if I admit that I'm wrong, then it makes me look weak. And so the person or the people who have the right answer, they're like, ah, uh, it's two. But the other two groups are so pissed off that even if they see the right answer, they attack. <laughs> oh, it's so nice. Chaos. Let's see, Mahmoud Shabani Fart says, Our two is a little bit introvert and painfully shy to say something to settle down the quarrel. Uh-huh. And perhaps number two is waiting. Yes, Leila Almeida says, This kind of behavior is dangerous. All right, Leah Huda says, What does passionate mean here? All right, let's take a look. Passionate. Well, I would say it means intense. Very, very focused. Very, very uh, that my way is the right way. But let's go take a look and see in the dictionary. See if we can find uh, some more synonyms for passionate in this context, right? Okay. So goodbye, Mr. Potato Head. Hello, dictionary. Move it over. Let's look for passionate. Oh, boy, we have a lot of synonyms. I can even push the more button. Woo! Okay, here we go. Let's hear it. Passionate. One more time. Passionate. Passionate. One more time. Passionate. Passionate. Okay, this is what it means. Showing or caused by strong feelings or a strong belief. Okay, and I'm, I'll come right back. I'm just take a peek. That's a perfect example. <laughs> they both have a, a strong belief that they're right, even though they're obviously wrong. Okay, so I mean, look at all these synonyms. Intense, impassioned, ardent, fervent, fervid, zealous, vehement, vigorous, strong, energetic. goes on down the line. So here, McGregor is passionate about sport. He loves it. He's intense about it. He's focused on it, right? All right. Sure. So passionate here is going to be their intensity, right? There's also a different meaning, showing or caused by intense feelings of sexual love. And that's not quite what we're talking about here. <laughs> that's not what we're looking for. Okay, so here we go. Leah Huda says, like stubborn. Yes, right. In this case, passionate could be stubborn. It could be, they are so intensely stubborn. They're so, let's see, what, other, what, we can, what can we grab in here? They are so... Emotional. That's probably a good one too. Emotional about what they believe. Okay. All right. Ah, Mohammed Farak says, I'm passionate about learning and teaching English. Yes. I'm passionate about explaining this crazy cartoon to you guys. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's do some pronunciation. Here we go. I will pause after I say it. Repeat after me. There are two different groups. Oop. Let's fix it first. Mm. Fighting with each other. Okay, let's start that one again. There are two different groups fighting with each other. One group is wearing red and the other group is wearing blue. They are arguing about a math problem. One team says one plus one equals one. The other team says one plus one equals three. They are incredibly pissed off. Okay, repeat after me. <gasps> well, I got to read a comment first. 
Leo Huda says, I'm passionate about listening to Abel Lingo. I think I'm going to blush. <laughs> okay, thank you for the comment. Wonderful, thank you. All right, let's continue with pronunciation. Repeat after me. However, they are wrong. The right answer, too, is standing below and watching the chaos. Someone from the red team and from the blue team are about to attack the right answer. Sometimes people are so passionate about what they believe that they argue even if they are obviously wrong. All right. And I think this cartoon has a lot to do with their pride. How they feel, their feelings, and they don't want to look weak and they don't want to look wrong or incorrect. So they're going to keep arguing no matter what. All right, let's see. Mahmoud says, in Tehran, driving is really a game, but after playing the game, you should have your car fixed because it would be full like a crumpled piece of metal. Mm hmm. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. All right. Okay, so that is it for today let's take a look what did we accomplish well we analyzed some comics in this live english lesson we explored vocabulary and hopefully we had some fun all right so let's review what did we do this was the first one with the man and the cat and the cat is going to eat the fish not going to lie to you when the man's gone and remember we were trying to figure out how is it that the man doesn't you know get upset about the cat the only solution i can come up with is that he's blind <laughs> and he can't see the cat so right the cat's gonna have a snack all right then we had our second cartoon where it's uh four frames one two three four frames or four pictures in this cartoon and it's a snake that ends up just talking to itself and crying because it's depressed and lonely all right, the next one was two grim reapers or two deaths talking to each other. And one of them has an extra job. He has a side gig and he delivers pizza and he earns amazing tips. He earns extra money, gratuity, when he explains and tells them, Oh, relax. I'm just here to deliver your pizza. I'm not here to kill you. <laughs> All right, our fourth cartoon was... <clears throat> Two potatoes talking and looking at the French fry. I see you eyeballing that French girl. We learned that eyeballing just means to stare at someone, right? To be looking with, with extra intensity, right? You're, you keep watching someone. All right. And then the last cartoon was the two teams that are arguing about that they're right, but they're actually both wrong. Okay, so that was chaos. Okay, all right, let's take a look. All right, let's see. Mohammed says, we had some fun, learn new vocabulary, pronunciation. All right. Mahmoud says, one of the biggest and almost worst problems of learners is that they don't know which adjectives can describe the scene appropriately. All right. Well, that's one reason I love to use pictures, because it's a wonderful opportunity to describe things, right, and boost our vocabulary. And then we have tools like Google, uh, Google Dictionary and Google Image Search, which is just a fabulous way to guarantee understanding of vocabulary and phrases. Okay, so we're at the end. If you enjoyed this lesson, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. And, oh, here's the animation. Ooh, ah. Ooh, ah, okay. <laughs> and all right, our motto, improve your English, become more valuable. All right, so improve your skill set and you're able to do more things. Maybe if you've noticed that on uh, just the last two days on our Instagram account, I'm putting inspirational quotes. And it's also a great way to learn vocabulary. So if you've been following following me on Instagram, you're going to see a lot more quotes, inspirational quotes, but I will also explain the vocabulary words in it. All right. And it has some music too. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm done for today. Everyone have a wonderful evening, day or night, wherever you are in the world. 
see you soon.